Deep within the fog-laced mountains lies a legend unlike any other, one with dense, dark fur, incredible height, and a scream that would scare off even the bravest of outdoorsmen. A legend that also has huge feet. <laughs> What's up everyone, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to be combining two of my favorite things, woodworking and cryptozoology. So should be a fun watch. Thanks for stopping by, let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Stepcraft. Think it, make it. All right, so I made this design in Adobe Illustrator and uh, I can't take full credit the Bigfoot silhouette and some of the trees were purchased from iStock and here are the screenshots for creator credit. After downloading, I just implemented them into uh, an easy design that sets each layer apart while having them complement each other in size and layout. The design as a whole is also a reference to one of my favorite shows, The X-Files, except this one has Bigfoot and it lights up. Is this why we came out here, Mona? It's all for UFOs? To build this, I'm going to be starting with 8th inch MDF, and to make the high precision cuts, I'm using the Stepcraft D840. Thank you again, Stepcraft, for sending me this. I can't say enough good things about this machine. Incredibly easy and intuitive to use, perfect for beginners like myself. These cuts look amazing, and I ended up using a 1 16th of an inch down cut bit for this. Right out of the box, everything worked great. For the plexiglass, however, I'm using an 8th inch single flute bit for a much cleaner cut on the acrylic. I'll have links in the description for everything, but once the bit was aligned, I just had to hit start and away it went. Now's a good time to mention if you want to see what I'm up to between videos, I post a lot more often on my Instagram page. It's a great way to stay in touch as well as if you have any questions or just want to see what kind of content I'm working on. And if the paranormal interests you, some of the videos I post there cover such topics as cryptids, alien encounters, paranormal, anything and everything spooky. I have a lot of fun doing it. The series is called The Hometown Occult because I also like to travel to the locations I mention when possible. So if that interests you, I'll have a link in the description to check it out. But getting back to the video, it's time for paint. In the original design, I had a backer board, but for the final product, I ended up leaving it out. So I had to repaint the mountains green. Here's my cat peppers to make sure I stay on task and to leave some cat hair in the paint. <laughs> I'm trying to paint. Once the painting was completed, uh, I ended up having to go back and clean up all the edges. The uh, the paint liked to fray the, uh, the MDF a little bit, but even though it's annoying, it's a pretty easy fix. Once that's done though, I can give this a clear coat to seal in the cheap acrylic paint and call it a day on coloring. While that dries, I can get started on lighting this thing up. I went with a very inexpensive USB powered strip that I was able to cut. I love how this plexiglass looks with a little bit of light, especially around the edges. It did seem a little too simple though, so I went back to the design, added a few marks to catch more of the light, and uh, yeah, it seemed to help a lot. So now it's time to glue everything back together. So just like in every video, I always end up messing something up, and uh, it always ends up being when I bring out the super glue, but <laughs> things went south pretty quickly. Um, I wanted to scratch up the plexiglass so the, the glue had something to adhere to, but I ended up doing it in the wrong spot and the scratches showed through on the, the final design, which is no good. Um, and then I just straight up spilled glue all over the place and the top of the plexiglass was officially ruined. Eventually I'll learn, just <laughs> not today. But instead of giving up or starting over, I figured why not try and sand it off. So after a bit of dismantling, I hit it with a few different grits all the way up to 1000 and then finished it off with a clear coat to fill in any micro abrasions left behind by the sandpaper. Although it wasn't crystal clear like the original, it was way better than before, so I kept going with this plan and I think it turned out pretty good. Gluing it back together correctly this time was a big relief and from here, I could get started with the base. It's a pretty simple design, nothing too fancy. It just needs to be able to hold the light switches and any of the wiring. Unfortunately though, the wood I went with was a little too thin for this. Uh, I need a little more space for the wire to bend downwards, but no big deal. I just went with a thicker piece of wood and copied the same design. I messed up on the angles, so a redo was gonna happen regardless. Next up, a small hole for the wire to run. Uh, I also filed away some of the edges so it's not such a harsh turn for the wire to make. After that's done though, I can glue this up and start the next segment of the base. 
For this, I get to use the CNC again to cut away an interesting space for the wires to sit. Nothing complex here and certainly nothing that can't be done with simple hand tools, but I did want to get a little fancy and uh, a little interesting for the, uh, the backing plate. For finish, I know I'm going to be staining it, but what I love about oak is the grain and being able to bring it out with a little fire. Not too much though, because it can warp the board if you do too much. And please be careful if you're doing this. Burning wood is dangerous. Do it outside, away from your house, and do it next to your hose. So when the inevitable happens, you're, you're in a safe space. But anyways, once that's done, I can drill a hole for the switch as well as the barrel connector and then give it a coat of one of my favorite stains. Walnut. After all these years, I still have yet to work with actual walnut. I just, I don't know anyone around here that mills and sells walnut, so I'm just going to keep staining oak. That's, that's what I know best. <laughs> While that dries, I can get started on the electrical. Since the LEDs I'm using run on five volts, I can cut up and reuse an old USB cable that I don't need anymore, giving it a glorious new purpose. Most USBs, however, have a few different connections, so make sure you use the red and black wire in the respective terminals and disregard any other. Essentially what my goal is with these connections is to make a barrel connector that easily connects and disconnects to the base so there isn't a constant cord sticking out of the back. I'm using lead-free solder here, which is just not working out so well. I, I really need to upgrade. After that though, I started heating the shrink wrap and then more shrink wrap. And at this point, it just, it looks so bad. <laughs> so in the trash it goes and I opted for a cord that was already made correctly. It's not wrapped in a cool blue paracord, but it's at least safe. <laughs> now it's time for assembly and wiring up the switch and plug. Uh, this is a good time to mention, I could have been way more professional and neat with these connections, but uh, I wanted to use up what I had on hand, which is not a whole lot. Uh, there's a lot of great solderless connection options out there, and uh, I'm definitely gonna explore them for next time, but for now, this is, uh, this is gonna work out fine. So this part gets a little tricky. Uh, I envisioned four screws holding this backing plate on, but unfortunately when I drilled into it, it snapped. Um, so found that little piece, glued it back on, and then just attached it with a little bit of hot glue. And that wraps up the base, which means all that's left to do now is reunite the base with the artwork. And there we go. I really love how this turned out. Thanks to this base style, I can swap out the artwork for something else. Uh, I want to make in the future. The barrel connector is super clean with the light up switch in the front. Just a really nice aesthetic. In the dark, the plexiglass looks really cool while not being so bright that it messes up the design or messes with your eyes. Now, I don't anticipate selling this one. Uh, for any that I do remake and sell, I've learned from my mistakes in this one. Uh, so any that I make going forward will have a much better connection uh, with the wires and uh, definitely a removable plate. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. It really means the world to me to have you here checking out these videos, checking out these projects. Um, so it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun making this. I hope you had fun watching it. And uh, let me know if you make one yourself. It was um, it was cool. It was it was a fun beginner's project for like CNC and stuff like that. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really goes a long way getting these videos out into the algorithm. Um, social media is it's, it's such a, a fickle thing in terms of having your content get out in, into the world and notice. So any and all help, I will happily accept. So thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next project.